guys, so today I wanted to sit down and give you a bit of a review of City of Brass. I finished this last night and had some thoughts and I was going to just put it in my reading vlog but then it ended up being kind of long and I thought I would let it be its own video. So here we go. I finished the City of Brass last night. I sat down and finished it like I said I needed to. It actually took me way less time than I thought which surprised me for some reason. Maybe I had less to read than I had expected or something. I definitely really liked it. So I wrote down my thoughts this time. Yay, I'm so proud of me. So if I'm looking down, that's why. Because I want to try to be a little bit more coherent, even though it's like a reading vlog and it's pretty casual. Um, like I was kind of talking about last night, I just, I want to get better at being a little more analytic about the things that I'm reading. I am not deeply analytic about this book at all, but uh, at least a little bit more organized at the very least. So um, my star rating for this is like four to four and a half stars, and I'll talk about why in a minute. So things I liked, um, the world building in this was really excellent. This is Chakraborty's debut, and I'm very impressed. Um, I'm sure it's not the first thing that she's written, and I'm sure she spent a ton of time developing this world. It's beautiful. And by that, I don't mean that it's like enormously described. A world can be built in such a way that you don't have to like tell me what every single room looks like in every single place, but just by sketching some broad strokes and then giving some depth to every kind of scene you really get good information. So the city of Brass is Devabad and it is the capital city of the Jinn or Deva, these not human beings, and they have a history and the city, it just anytime anybody goes through, you get the sense of it being crowded and noisy and dirty and filled with people. And that I think is super important to uh, like a world that's being constructed for fantasy. My words are bad right now. So just really well done. You get the sense of like the heat of the city, the plush, um, luxurious, sur luxur whatever, the plush luxury of the palace and of some of the more um, wealthy residences as opposed to the kind of like grit and dirt of the poorer places that we get to see. Um, I like that we have this broad swath of socioeconomic experience, if not major characters. Most of the main characters are royalty or important. So that's fine. So the world building was really excellent. The magic was also really good in this story. The djinn all have special abilities, but there wasn't any big like explanation moment of it and I really actually liked that because for all of these people except for one of the characters magic is just kind of a thing that they live with and the book treats it like it's a thing that they live with it doesn't need to be explained it's just how the their world works um, the magic is kind of elemental so for instance um, Ali his family has some abilities and his special sword fighting, he's able to light a flame. And all of the djinn, to some extent, have this fire elemental, but then there are also water beings, and we learn about um, other beings that are for the air, but they're not djinn, they're different, so they uh, have different abilities and even look different. So there's this like very complex world that's built around the magic and the abilities of the magic. Nahri is a healer and that's one of the marks of her people. Um, so different things like that. So it was very nice. It was very natural. It just kind of like was there and um, nobody made a big deal about it, which I appreciate. All of the characters were really good. They were very complex. Everybody had their own uh, wishes and desires and the conflicts in the book came from the clashes of those characters desires and that is my favorite kind of storytelling so the plot is a hundred percent about just this group of people we have two perspectives but then also the number of other people around them everybody's really complex everybody has their own desires and everybody is like has good and bad qualities to them 
even Ali, who's one of our narrators and like and a protagonist for sure, is not right all the time. And the people who are kind of more antagonists are also right some of the time. Uh, you can see their points and you can understand their reasonings and for most of them, their, their reasons for the actions that they're taking and the decisions that they're making are really understandable and valid ones. Like nobody here is an evil sorcerer or anything. Like it's just a bunch of complex people with a lot of power trying to make decisions that they think are best for themselves and also for the people that they have power over. So really interesting. Nobody's typecast or tropey and I really really liked the characters. Definitely my favorite part of the book. So because the story is about all of these characters with different desires, it's a really political novel and I also really liked that. Devabad has this very deep and long history and I won't rehash it because that would take forever. But basically the one of the groups of the deva that live in the city are called the deva and they used to be the ruling group of people and like a long time ago 1500 years or something they <clears throat> did some stuff and got themselves overthrown by the um family and uh, tribe that's now in power still and so the deva group has their own part of the city and they're kind of like supposed to stay there and they're treated uh, like carefully but definitely like second class citizens if something goes wrong it's their fault that kind of thing now nari who is a girl that grew up on the streets of cairo and accidentally summons a uh, jinn or genie who realizes that she is maybe important and takes her to devabad she's the last of the um ruling family of the deva and so that just makes everything even more complicated and the the city was already kind of had some tensions especially over the treatment of the half human half jinn who are yeah, definitely second class citizens and Ali isn't so sure that that is right and that's a very complex and thorny issue and I like that it was never treated very like patly again you understand kind of both of the sides so I'm explaining the complexities of the politics of the city very badly, but um, I thought that they were really well done in the story and it made it very interesting and, and complicated. Uh, the reason I didn't give it five stars, first of all, I found Nari kind of, I don't, I don't want to say annoying. She wasn't annoying. She just didn't do a whole lot. Like a lot of her story was her reacting to things that other people were doing. Uh, so she does summon the djinn but then like he kind of is the one who keeps her safe from the uh, beings that are trying to attack her takes her to devavad because she's going to be safe and then when she's in devavad she kind of is controlled not controlled but um the the ruling family is making choices for her and she's not really like stepping up to the plate she does finally do that, that's a little bit of a spoiler, sorry, but it's really, really late in the book. And that kind of annoyed me a little bit as far as her character arc. Like, especially surrounded by so many complex and interesting people, the fact that she kind of just like floated along and, and was just like, I just want to live my life, is, she was just a little kind of naive, I guess. And that's part of her character journey, and I think in the sequel she's definitely going to start overcoming that but I kind of wish it had happened she had started doing that a little bit earlier in the book and then also this is very much the first book in a tr it's a tr it's going to be a trilogy as far as I understand and it's definitely reads like a first book in a trilogy like I prefer stories that have a kind of finish to them some things are resolved they have their own arc by themselves and you can just kind of like read it and then also there's more so sleeping giants which i just finished feels like that maggie stiefvater's raven cycle felt like that and this book not so much even it had like an arc and a climax but it was very much just a moment on the way to more things so this story is very very much going to be one of those where the the narrative arc of the story is primarily going to be across all three books 
and that's fine. It's a little annoying because I have to wait for the next book to continue things. Also, the characters never, none of them really, like, again, their character arcs are, are kind of, they're not flat, but they're just very incomplete. Everything just felt very incomplete. And then, of course, the ending just complicates things even more. So I finished, like, wow, this was a really good book, but I also didn't have that, like, satisfying feeling of finishing a book because I've only finished a third of the story, essentially. And so that was kind of annoying for me. So I knocked off half a star. Definitely um, a great book. If you like fantasy at all, I highly recommend it. This is adult fantasy, and I appreciated that the mature content was pretty much non-existent which uh, was great. There's one kiss in the story, but nothing goes further than that. So I appreciated that a lot because I feel like sometimes adult fantasy gets kind of smutty and I'm not here for smut. I'm here for politics. So great book, highly recommend it. Very interesting and complicated, complex. And I'm really glad I picked it up. Okay, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you have read or plan to read City of Brass. Like, follow, subscribe, all the things, and thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.